Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and we're back with the next part of the Harley Treads Quilt. We're actually working on blocks G, H, I, and J, which are the seven areas that I have circled on my diagram. I will also go ahead and put a screenshot up so that you can pause your video and take a screenshot of your computer so you can have the chart as well. And again, because we are well into the planning of this particular quilt, I am not going to go over measurements on how I actually arrived at my actual piecing. I just want to show my pieces and then tell you what you need to start piecing from there. So for this month, we're going to be working on seven block units. We need block G, which we only need one of which this is a typo it should be 12 by 18 I just saw that it says 17 so I will make sure that the one that's on the screen is correct it should be 12 by 18 finished you need just one and then the next block area we're going to need is block H which is 6 by 18 and then we're going to need two I blocks they're 12 by 12 we'll need three J blocks and they are 24 by 18 and so these are our duplicate blocks there so just circled the seven blocks that we need to make this month this is actually one two three four five six seven so the seven areas that we need this month again I have gone ahead and pieced everything so I just want to show you the final results so let me move out the pieces underneath Okay, so I moved my pieces and now we're just going to start showing you what I piece for my units. Technically, this section is the same size as a block B, which is a 18 inch square. And so I just did that, put my pieces together, sorta of, kinda, I got a combination of this unit, but it stops here. And then the bottom unit here is actually a seam all the way across. So we'll just talk about what I put in my 18 inch square. I put a 12 by 12 t-shirt square. So I cut this 12 and a half by 12 and a half. And that means I needed another 6 inches over here. So this block is 6 inches. So I added two 3 inch finished pieces. So these are cut 3 and a half by 6 and a half. And then a 6 and a half inch square. And then on the bottom I needed a whole another 6 inch piece going through here. This was one of those shirt fronts that was smaller than this one up here. So I had to add a 1 inch strip. I added a 3 and a half inch by 6 and a half inch piece here. And then I added a six and a half by nine and a half inch piece there. And this is one and a half inch. So that's my 18 inch square in that section. You could piece this any way that you want. You can piece it like the paper says, or you can do a combination like what I did. So that's my first and second blocks technically completed. My next blocks were pretty simple for my eyes. They were 12 inch finish. So I just cut two squares that are 12 and a half. So that's number one and this is number two. So that was really simple to do. For my J blocks, they needed to be 24 by 18. I needed three of those. So on this one, I actually put sashing all the way around and my top and bottom border is shorter than my side borders so instead of having squares in the corners i actually have rectangles so that's number one here is block number two i just added a piece on top and then additional pieces on the sides and then for my third one I added a frame but only on 
three sides. So those are all of my block units that I piece. So this time my goal is to piece all of this section here. And then I want to then add it to this top section so that all of this is together. Now last video I showed you how I was doing a lot of the partial seaming. A lot of this quilt top is partial seaming. It's requested by the consumer because he didn't want a quilt that looked easily put together. So that's why we have a lot of partial seams in this layout. And I am not going to show you any of the seaming this time. I will come back and show you a completed photo once I have sewn all of these units together. If you're having any difficulty with piecing this, you can leave me comments like what should get pieced first if you're stuck on a particular spot and I will try to help you out of that situation. But as far as piecing any more on camera or laying this out on my deck, I don't want to continue to do that because it takes a lot of time. So I will see you on my deck with the completed part sewn together. I'm back and I have completed my sewing together of part one and two and I just wanted to do some clarification and I'm going to put this on the screen for you as well. As a photo, in part one, I actually had to sew my block B and my block J onto part one in order to connect this. And then my part two only consists of these blocks here. But I just wanted to give you some help with how to put this together. And then I showed you where I've got my numbers. This was the first seam I sewed. This was the second seam that I sewed. My third seam was show sewing block J to the DF unit here. Then once that was done, I sewed block B on as my fourth seam. But I stopped because I have to insert block I in here first and then once I did four I was able to put number five here I had already started sewing this F unit so I just completed this partial seam and then my last number six seam was here along the sides and then number seven is my actual last seam across the top so it took me seven seams to put this quilt top together and I will also put up a final photo of the video so that you can see it as well so I'll see you next time in the next session we will have four blocks to complete or four sections to complete and we will have the quilt top put together in the next section so see you next time bye bye mm -hmm.